Um, what did you make of, uh, of what Yvette Cooper had to say about this crackdown on street crime? This comes in the day when the zombie knives have finally, finally been uh, going to be taken off our streets, we are told. Um, we're going to crack down on, you know, the phone thefts, the bag thefts and all of that. Um, do we have any likelihood that this is actually going to happen, given we haven't got enough police? And even if we did arrest people, there's no prison places to put them in. Well, it's not just about arresting, is it? Although people who commit crime should be arrested, as many of your callers have been saying. I think I welcome the idea that Labour is going to fo focus on what it announced at the election was one of its five missions. If you remember, it was, it was high growth, clean energy, Number three, safe streets. And I think we all want safe streets. And anybody involved in the criminal justice or policing business knows that there are techniques that we can use to make our streets safer. So I welcome the focus, but as you say, it's going to need money, it's going to need more police officers, and it's, it's going to need goodwill from citizens to, to help make it happen. You know, we have to be able to prepare, be prepared to report crime. Uh, and. In I mean, plenty of people report in, in crime. Oh, a... Paul, plenty of people report crime. Just nothing happens after they do of it. Of course. But, no, exactly, and therefore there's a disincentive, isn't there? If nothing happens, I myself was burgled, nothing happened. You know, you think, why bother? But, you know, I was, I was speaking to people involved in policing here in, in Liverpool, and they think that they are getting on top of some of this stuff, but as everyone, everyone knows, they, they, everyone needs more resources. So I'd like to see Yvette Cooper back up this commitment, which I welcome, with the resources for the police to make it happen. Although we're told there's £22 billion black hole, there isn't any money, there's going to be a painful budget ahead. There's been so much doom and gloom. It was fairly gloomy from Rachel Reeves yesterday. We're told that Keir Starmer in his big keynote speech, two o'clock today, is going to uh, be just be a little bit more sort of upbeat, talking about there is light at the end of this tunnel. Um, people are going to have to put up with short-term financial pay for great gain. But if the finances are such a big mess, public services are in such a big mess, and so much extra money is needed after all those years of austerity, even though, of course, the last few years, money has been pumping into public uh, sector uh, workers and public services. Um, how on earth is it just going to be short term? And what does short term mean? Like six months, two years, four years? Because I don't know how much more the British people can take. Well, look, yes, the, it's, there can't be just more pain. And I think that I'd be looking this afternoon for, to hear from Keir Starmer, not just light at the end of the tunnel, which is a cliche, but a little bit more detail about what, what that light is. I think Labour's got a lot to be proud of already. You look at what they've done on energy, solar power, solar <laughs> plants, solar farms have been given the go-ahead. Brilliant. No, they have, Julian. I'm how, very proud I of that. They have. I wanna, they I have. Wanna... And how is, that, how is that something to be proud of when the lights go out in a few years' time? Because we can't afford to uh, keep the lights on anymore. No, no, no. no, no, no the, the solar power is, is, is our route to cheap and safe it's, and secure energy. It's, and what's more, it's not in some secure. of the places where, we, where we're getting... Well, you say that it's no, I the, say pure, it's the I do best facts. form of energy and it will help save it will help save our planet. Save our so planet. Planet doesn't need planet, saving. It will start Solar saving, energy is not the it answer. Will start you can't jobs. have a clean grid it will by start 2030. Jobs, that's Julia, a fact. In places, there won't be any jobs. In, in it won't create jobs. It won't be reliable. It won't be cheaper, and it won't save grid, the planet. Grid connections. You will find that Labour right. is going to wire up this country I with renewable energy, and we're going to start creating jobs. Tens of billions of pounds to wire. So I want to see no, Keir Starmer now start to really, really sell that story of the stuff that Labour is already doing on clean energy, on growth, and yes, no, on safe streets. I mean, look, okay, all of that stuff isn't going to happen, but good, but good luck. I mean, I'm, I'm all in favour of if, if you know making good effort to try. Can I ask you about Mick Lynch, a uh, militant RMT uh, trade union boss? He's vowed yesterday to seize Comrade control Lynch, yeah. of the UK economy. Uh, basically says his Labour friends are now in power. We need to have trade unions in control of the UK economy. What does he mean by that? And would you welcome that? Well, I, I am a trade unionist and I have always fought in our profession, Julia, journalism uh, for workers' rights, for the rights of the people sitting there at the, at the computer terminal, uh, you know, long hours, tough conditions, we need trade unions. And I, I'm glad now that we have a party in power that stands for the first time for 14 years for working class people. As to seizing for control of the economy, that's not what Labour's about. Mick Lynch is a Labour Party member, but his union, the RMT, is not affiliated to 
to this party. It votes for other parties, and good luck to them, but that's not what we are about. We are about giving workers' rights in the places that they work. We're talking about care workers, talking about teachers, talking about doctors, nurses, factory workers, the people across the river here in, 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 on the Mersey at Camel Laird Shipyard, building uh, the Royal Navy's new, new supply ships. They have union rights, and they have respect at work because they have a union. And well, I'd encourage every, uh, yeah. every listener to talk to join one. I, I, I hate to tell you, but an awful lot of the trade unions who are affiliated to Labour are very unhappy about your green policies because all the jobs are going to be lost. Let me ask you about one other union, Royal College of Nurses. They've gone on strike in recent months. This is not a, part, a union that has a history of being militant at all. Uh, they settled for far lower pay deal than uh, the doctors and then you know, railway workers, particularly train drivers, got. They've been offered 5.5% in the latest round of, uh, of, uh, of, of the pay offers. Um, and they yesterday rejected that, announced it right at the point yep. when Rachel Reeves was on stage talking about the state of the economy and workers' rights. Now, at the end of the day, you know, this is what a lot of people were warning, that if you give a big pay deal to the train drivers, already on 65k as a basic, if you give a big pay deal to doc, junior doctors, now called resident doctors, way higher than other NHS workers or other public sector workers, all the other unions are going to go, hold on. Where's my slice of the pie? This is going to be predicted. We are now going to be in a spiralling circle of, of wage rises for public sector workers, aren't we? Where does it end? Um, I welcome wage rises for public sector workers. I think they should be paid what they are worth. But with the nurses uh, rejecting that five-point-something pay officer, offer, everybody who's involved in industrial relations knows that you do... That, that a settlement is reached through negotiation. Now, what I will imagine could, could be happening is that the health secretary, West Streeting, will go to the nurses and say, well, I probably can give you a bit more, but I could also do more on conditions. I can do more on career paths. I can do more on how you move from one grade to yeah, another. Yeah, but that, 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 that's I know happening you get in every workplace across more, the country. Yeah, you get, look, you get paid more as you move up the grades, but fundamentally, a lot of that doesn't really pay the mortgage. At the end of the day, nurses quite rightly can oh. say, why have doctors got a bigger pay rise than us when they're on higher pay already? We've also seen our pay eroded. It, and, it's a, and it's a great argument. And the point about industrial relations is there are two sides of it. There is, there is the management and there are the unions. And when you've got good management union relationships, what happens as these arguments take place, 5%, 6%, is that you come to an agreement. And at the end of it, everybody lives with it. What we've had in Britain for 14 years under the Tories is a situation where the government isn't listening to the workforce. Labour is listening to the workforce. I'm a trade union rep in my own industry, and I know that you win some and you lose some. Okay. And everything is done through negotiation. Yeah, but there's the a difference the between listening and then giving people a big pay rise paid for largely by the 80% of people in this country who are in the private the private sector, not the public sector. The public sector is a small minority of those who work in this country, and therefore a small minority of the taxpayers in this country. How many 15%, 20% pay rises can the rest of the country afford to give to public sector workers when private sector workers haven't seen anything of the sort? And we've experienced the same inflation. And by the way, don't get the same sort of public sector pension deals as those people get. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. At the low paid end of the private sector, you are seeing some very poor pay deals. But I can tell you, in, in the unionised part of the private sector, uh, the Unite the Union, which is a, an affiliate and, a, and colleagues here in the union, uh, uh, Unite the Union are colleagues part of the Labour Party, um, they are winning very decent pay settlements in the private sector. Remember, the people who collect your bins aren't, public, aren't employed by the council, they're often employed by private companies. And in those companies they're handing those workers very decent sometimes pay rises because those workers are getting organized and that's what we in the Labour Party stand okay. for we stand for working-class people getting together getting organized and, and pushing our agenda okay. of better pay better conditions and social justice for the, those who can't fight for themselves okay let me ask you just very briefly about donations because they have dogged this uh, party conference dogged the Labour Party for the last few weeks those yeah. stories aren't going away um, We've, we've, le we've learned today that um, Labour took a £4 million donation during the general election from Quadrature. They're a Cayman Islands registered hedge fund. I wonder why they've chosen to be registered in the Cayman Islands. It's a mystery to all of us, isn't it? They've got shares in fossil fuels, shares in arms manufacturers and shares in private health care. Um, 
Does this show a certain level of hypocrisy of the Labour Party? They'll take money from anyone. I think you should be able to take money from any, anyone where you can actually trace where the money comes from. I don't know the details of well, that the money, one. The money's from fossil yeah, fuels on manufacturing and private health care. Yeah, I thought in, Labour disapproved in, of all in that stuff. In principle... No, in, princi in principle, principle, as long as the donation is legal, as long as the donation is legal... Didn't say I'm it was illegal. Because it's, as you could so it's perfectly yeah, legal you, for people yeah, to register a hedge fund in the Cayman the election, Islands. Julia, but yeah. is it as you saw in the election, in, as you saw in the election, you need a lot of money to fight an election. However, what I'm more concerned about is these individual donations that are going to individual MPs and ministers. I, I, we are journalists, both of us. I have never accepted any, any freebie. I wouldn't accept a freebie uh, of the tiniest uh, amount. Uh, and I think you have to maintain your own... Uh, you, you don't have to be just... You have to be straight and you have to be seen to be straight. And I just think uh, some of the pe senior people in, in, in the politics need to just think twice about accepting, you know, uh, holidays or parties or clothing. It just, just doesn't write to the ordinary person. It, it absolutely doesn't. I certainly doesn't. wouldn't do it. Uh, well, I mean, um, you, obviously you disagree with Wes Streeting, the health secretary. He has said last night to the BBC, I'm really proud of people who want to contribute their money to our, polis our politics. He says it is a noble pursuit... I just like giving money to charity. So Taylor Swift concert tickets, a new pair of glasses, new pair of shoes for the Prime Minister, apparently that's just the same as giving money to cancer charity or an animal no, well, rights I wouldn't, charity. I, wouldn't do, I certainly wouldn't agree with that. I certainly wouldn't agree with that. What I would say is, yes, individ, uh, businesses, individuals who want to give to this party, please give it because we need it. I'm a Labour Party activist. I'm pro to take that money. But I just think politicians themselves should, like okay. ourselves or journalists or other people in public life, have got to be just very careful about the individual donation. Okay. Paul Mason, really appreciate you joining us.